What's going on guys? Can you guess what we're doing today? We're going to be setting up graphene on this phone. So we're going to replace the closed source proprietary Android stuff and we're going to be replacing it with open source hardened graphene operating system. So we're going to do this together today. What you need is a data cord attached to your Linux laptop and open up a Chromium browser or Chrome browser up to the Graphene OS install what by web page. So what we're gonna be doing is first, we're gonna run this command here. We're gonna stop FW up D service, and we're gonna follow all of these instructions today. And we're gonna do it together. So I've got a fresh phone. Number one thing, you wanna make sure you have factory unlocked, and I have a network unlocked, factory unlocked phone here. So of course you need a compatible phone. A Google Pixel is gonna be required for this. It only is supported by Google uh, Pixel phones. So the first thing we need to do is open up our settings, go to About Phone, then scroll down to Build Number. And then you're gonna tap that a bunch of times until we get to Developer Mode. Two steps left. It's about 10 times or so. Just keep hitting it until you say you are a developer. Okay, let's take a look at these instructions. And what we need to do here, we need to enable OEM unlocking. Now, of course, you're also gonna need some of these packages, these Android SDK platforms, so the software development kit platform packages. So you're gonna want some extra things. You'll see all of this on the page. I'm gonna be going through it. I've already installed that. I need to run that first command here. And I just did so in the terminal up at the top here. So you can see I just ran the command right there. Next thing we need to do. All right. We need to go into the phone now. We're going to go back into our settings. And we're going to go down to... We need to enable OEM unlocking. Let's go ahead and so enabling OEM unlocking. Next, we need to go to developer options, and now we need to go to the developer options. System, it's in system area. So we have system here. Now we need to go to developer options. All right, and we need to OEM unlocking. We're gonna go ahead and hit enable here. Now we've enabled OEM unlocking, so that's been done inside the phone. So we go down and continue on and on. And you may need to update your phone, especially if you have a Pixel 6a, so you may need to connect to Wi-Fi. So that's something I should point out. This, depending on the phone model, if it's grayed out on OEM unlocking, you will want to apply the updates and all you'll have to do is connect to Wi-Fi on that. You don't need to insert your SIM card in order to run the updates that will ungray out that as long as you have a compatible phone. Okay, now that we've done that, we have our cord, our USB-A to USB-C attached to the other end of the phone itself. Boot into the bootloader. All right, well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and follow the instructions here. So we'll need to reboot our device. The volume down button as we're doing that. So holding down the volume down, it's gonna allow us to unlock the bootloader. There we are. We'll go ahead and hit unlock bootloader here. We can see that the phone's detected. One thing I recommend is keep your phone as still as possible uh, because you don't want to lose a connection to your USB in the process of this. So we'll go ahead and hit connect. All right, and it says, if you can see, it's now enabled another option. We'll go to hit the volume down again and we want to select unlock the bootloader. You'll also notice it says right here, bootloader unlocking triggered successfully. So this is actually not a tough process at all, but if you care at all about privacy and security and you wanna run Android, this is what you're gonna to wanna to do. So remember, use those volume buttons to toggle the different settings here. So I'm gonna to need to hit this top power button 
to select unlock the bootloader as you can see right here but make sure don't forget use those volume buttons to select so I'm going to go ahead and hit that power button now I've selected unlock the bootloader okay here we are now you can see it says unlocked as you can see right there it now says device state is unlocked all right so next all we need to do is we need to now download it and flash it. It's that easy now. So if you had put an open source Android project on your phone years ago, you may remember some of the processes was more of a command line uh, type of situation, but now you, know, you have a web-based installer, just make sure you're opening it only in a Chromium or Chrome-based browser in order to do that. We're gonna go ahead and hit download release now. It's going to take some time to download, and once we do that, we're going to flash it. So you can follow along with me today if you have a phone that's compatible with this process. I did a video for members as a big thank you. I want to send a shout out and a thank you to members, by the way. Uh, you guys, I really appreciate all your support here. And everybody who comments, likes the videos, shares the videos, shares the blog posts, all of that, you know, really helps the channel and helps the blog out. You know, I put a lot of hours into content here over the 400 or so videos about that I've done. Uh, and a lot of times I spend 10 or more hours editing a video, depending how, you know, intricate and how many different layers I add to it. But this one's not going to take me too long to do. So we're downloading the BlueJ graphene here. And then after it's finished this download here, next we're going to go to flash the release and we'll continue along following these instructions. It's not going to be too difficult. As mentioned, make sure you have a good data cord. You don't want to mess up halfway in between flashing it. So I do recommend not, you know, picking up the phone because you can get a, a slight, you know, disconnect that could interrupt the process of what you're doing. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to hit flash release because it says downloaded. Make sure you wait until it says downloaded. Now we'll just go ahead and hit flash release. Okay, now it's writing it to the phone. So we're letting it finish. It's restarting. You're going to notice it reboots a couple times during this process. It's not anything unusual that's fully expected in this process. But make sure you wait for all the processes to finish. And as mentioned, it's just going to reboot a few times as it's doing it. Nothing unusual there. That's all expected. And the writing process does take longer than the download process, I guess, depending how quick your internet is. Because it has to replace the entire stock operating system with graphene. So it is doing a full replacement, and you will have many benefits when you run an open source Android. You don't have to pick graphene. And maybe I'll install a different one like Calyx or, you know, one of the other options in the future. Uh, but today I just wanted to do graphene. I know it's one of those that so many people talk about, but I also want to cover some other ones uh, because I, they definitely need recognition for all the hard work they do as well. Uh, but graphene is pretty much the gold standard for most people, but Calyx is also excellent. You know, there's other excellent options, so I would like to do a video on that in the future as well. And we can go ahead and just get ready for the next processes. While it is doing this, this writing onto the phone memory, we're going to go ahead and look down. What we're going to do next, we're going to relock that bootloader. That's really important. You definitely want to do that because you open yourself up to vulnerabilities if you have an unlocked bootloader. And it's just good practice, of course. You know, it's bare minimum practice, really. So... It even mentions here, verify boot will detect modification. So after you flashed it successfully, what you'll notice is every boot, it's going to say, warning, this is not the official Android operating system for this phone. And it warns you because Google, of course, has the verify boot and it will give you a hash. So you can actually take a look and compare that 
In fact, I believe it's at the bottom here. Yep, there we go. So right at the bottom here, you're gonna notice all of these different hashes. So after you have flashed your phone with whichever model you happen to be using, the process is all the same. Um, you're gonna want to verify that if you ever feel the need. On the boot, you're gonna see a hash like this. And you're gonna wanna verify it against your phone. It'll always match up. Even if you get upgrades in the future, it's still gonna match up. So you will always wanna ensure that. Now, if something goes wrong or your file system gets corrupted, you will see a red screen before that. Now, the good news I have for you there is even in that case, you may actually fix that in a future upgrade. So I can tell you from firsthand experience when I had an issue where I interrupted an upgrade, it was fixed in the next upgrade. However, that's not guaranteed, but if you ever need to, if you ever have an issue where you're concerned about you know, the security, you can always reflash it or you could try a factory reset. Just make sure to back up your files beforehand so you don't lose anything important. And it's almost done writing the BlueJay install here. And what we'll do next is we'll lock the bootloader again. And after you boot, on the first time you boot, it's also going to ask if you want to disable OEM unlocking. So you are going to want to do that. So you can always unlock it again if you need to, but it's always good to follow all of the basic guidelines here. And then after you set everything up, you know, there's so many other measures you can take to just install best practices. And you can see some of my videos relating to that, and I'll do more in the future as well. For instance, you will want to set Tor Browser as your default browser. And the reason for that is because if you happen to open an email or a message and you click a link, do you really want to open that with a direct connection and give away your network addresses? Or would you prefer to have it open in Tor Browser where you'll only share that exit node in case someone's trying to exploit you? All right, now let's go ahead to the next step. Let's go ahead and lock that bootloader. We are almost there, guys. We're almost there. So we just done this. now. At this point, it enables us to go once again and use our volume button to lock the bootloader. So we'll go ahead and hit the volume buttons to toggle and select it. And then to select it, we're going to hit this top power button here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. I'm going to hit it to lock the bootloader. I've just done so. And it's going to be booting. Let's see what we got next here. Now, at this point, we'll go ahead and it says you've now successfully installed Graphene Operating System and can boot it. And that's what we're going to want to do. Locked, because we successfully locked that bootloader. What we're going to want to do is we're going to hit Start, because we want to boot it up for the first time. So that's how easy it is. You can have one, and there's the hash right there. Take a look there. You can see that hash. You can cross-reference it against this right here. So you see the Pixel 6a? That's it. And it matches right up. And we're on our very first boot of Graphene Operating System. That wasn't hard, was it? That was very easy to do, and you can do it at home yourself. Grab yourself a factory and an unlocked phone, and you can go ahead and flash Graphene. Or you can try one of the other options like Calyx or any of the other ones that are looking good to you, which I may do a video on in the future. But at this point, I wanted to at least do the initial, you know, standard that so many go to. But I do believe people should also run Calyx, another excellent choice. And it looks like Graphene, there's some changes to the pixel coming. So it does look like there is a little bit of uncertainty years into the future, but nothing to worry about at the moment. There we have it, guys. We've got a Graphene phone now. That's how easy it can be. You simply go to the web page with a Chromium or Chrome-based browser. Make sure you have a good USB cord, of course, because otherwise you can't properly transfer those files without a good quality cord. Make sure it's in good shape. Over time, they wear out, and you don't want to have one that's not able to finish the process, so ensure you do. Now at this point, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hit next. We'll go ahead and turn away our Wi-Fi.
Okay, I'm hitting off on location services, things like that. Now I'm setting a pin. I'm just going to do one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that confirms it. Okay, should I do my fingerprint? No. And I don't recommend doing your fingerprint. Did you know you have a Fifth Amendment that you do not, that you're actually protected, but you don't have a Fifth Amendment against your biometrics? You do have rights, and you should exercise them, especially if you're innocent. That's the main thing. Especially if you're innocent, you should be exercising your rights because if you do not use your rights, you will undoubtedly lose them. If people en masse are not actually exercising their rights, people will think they don't exist. Eventually, that will be the case. And I hope you stick with that advice. Now, you don't want to add biometrics. If you really care about your security, you will not use biometrics because you can be forced to reveal that. Now, of course, as mentioned, I do not condone any activity where, but I do want to protect people who are innocent. Obviously, if you're innocent, then we're going to hit not now and not ever, <laughs> never, ever biometrics. Okay, now what we need to do is skip, skip, skip. And last step, disable OEM unlocking and we'll hit start. Okay, now at this point, what do I recommend you first do? Well, I'll tell you what I recommend you first do. We'll go ahead and the first thing I think you should do is set up profiles. I'm not going to do that today, but I am going to recommend it to people. So add a user profile. This is what you'll do. You'll go to add user. You'll add new users. Then you can set up various compartmentalized setups inside. So essentially it's just like a Linux user and you will only have access when you're logged in as that user in that area. So it's a security feature as well. So I do recommend adding users. Maybe you are a journalist and maybe you're an activist. Maybe you want an activist profile that has all your activism stuff. Maybe you have a journalist area. You want all your journalism stuff. Maybe you want to set up just your finances on a completely isolated separate profile. That's a good idea too. So there's so many things you can do with this just like you would. Check out my other videos where I talk about how you can enable your banking apps. Anyhow, that's it guys. That's how easy it is. And that's my advice on how to get started. Don't use biometrics if you care about your rights. And that's it for the day. Thanks to the members who make this possible. Really appreciate you guys. If you want to support this, you can go to bmc.link slash politictech. Make sure to share the video, like it, comment, and subscribe so you can catch more information like this. And I'll be back later with more on how to protect your security and privacy.